This video is sponsored by the Battle Dome Patreon. Click the link to receive bonus content every month. Benten is one of the most powerful and versatile characters out there, with a kind of combat flexibility that by itself is difficult to tackle. And Ben, as an ultimate alien while armed with the Ultimatrix, can survive most battles and find a way to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. In his universe. But what if ultimate alien Ben Tennyson wasn't in his universe? What if Ben was thrown thousands of millennia into a hellish future where hope is an atrophied vestigial organ in the mutated body of a galaxy gasping for its dying haggard breaths? What if Ben 10 with the Ultimatrix was thrown into the grim darkness of the 41st millennium? And big shout out to Thor Storian for suggesting this video idea. The expansive depth of Warhammer 40k is such that each individual scenario that Ben could encounter would make this video several hours long. So today we'll be covering some of the worst case scenarios, the most likely scenarios, and then finally the best case scenarios. And starting with the worst case scenarios. Chaos Worlds. Worlds dominated entirely by the Chaos Gods present unique challenges to Ben as a character, in addition to the challenge of just surviving. Ben's willpower and sense of duty allowed him to turn away from the reality warping power of the Ascalon and the Dagon, but the constant mental onslaught of temptation at every waking moment may chip away at his near unbreakable resolve, especially with the heightened ego of ultimate alien Ben. Each kind of world would offer a challenge to Ben in a unique way to them, but in each Ben just has to stay strong against the ruinous powers. Corn worlds are the simplest, and they highlight a challenge to Ben's usual morality in that he would have to abstain from killing if possible. In the realm of the brass god of war and murder, that's not really going to be an option. Standard cornate demons and chaos space marines don't present any unique challenges to ultimate alien Ben's arsenal beyond their unshakable bloodlust and constant pressure. If Ben were to encounter a worldbreaker squadron or a pack of daemons, he'd have to immediately cope with the constant violent tenacity they bring to the battle. But with his higher tier powerhouses like Chromastone and Ultimate Humongosaur, he shouldn't have much trouble with them in small groups. But Cornate Champions, or worse yet, named Cornate Space Marines like Karn, would present a challenge that Ben would be forced to shed his usual apprehensions if he hopes to survive. These worlds would also put him in a position where it would be entirely possible that Ben could encounter a Daemon Prince, in this case Angron. Without substantial support from a transformation like Ultimate Waybig, Ben wouldn't have enough to put Angron down long enough to force the accompanying World Eaters to rout. Ben's best hope would be to find a way off this world and return at a later date when he has better bearings, though it's not completely unlikely that he would die before he gets these bearings. This would be a similar strategy with the other Chaos Worlds, as Ben would otherwise have to go scorched earth with his heavy hitters in order to eradicate every enemy on the planet. Another potential strategy could be the use of clockwork to reverse the physical effects of chaos on the world he's on, but that would require Ben to get an explanation for anything that's going on, which I guess you could argue he could get from Brainstorm. Slaanesh and Nurgle's world would be much the same challenge, though the former's tempting vices would be much less effective on Ben as he's shown that even unassailable power is not enough to corrupt him when he's anchored to his friends and family. And as with Angren, Fulgrim would require the power of Ultimate Waybig or Clockwork to put him down with any assurance, but Nurgle's infected worlds would, despite his trademark being the god of death and decay, be the easiest for Ben to handle as the Nurgleite forces are comparatively less capable in combat than their counterparts. They rely more on their surprising durability and thick miasma of pathogens. And the former can be powered through with the likes of Heat Blast, Chroma Stone, or Energy, and the latter can actually be circumvented by a feature of the Ultimatrix that he should retain from the Omnitrix. Ben could constantly rewrite the DNA of the world with aliens from his Ultimatrix's database in order to bolster his resistance against disease. As these are strands of DNA from a completely different universe, old Papa Nurgle's gonna have a hard time getting around the completely altered biosphere of the plagued world. Ben also has numerous aliens that would be immune to conventional diseases like Upgrade, Nanomech, and Goop, and that would definitely halt Nurgle's process. Tichnitz would present a unique challenge to Ben that may be the most difficult out of all the Chaos Worlds. Despite his horrific malice and treacherous nature, he can, has, and will attempt to appeal to someone like Ben. Ben's inclusion into the great game would add an element of chaos due to his capabilities paired with his resolve, and it isn't completely unfathomable that this chaos god that I'm not going to try to pronounce again would constantly try to influence Ben's heroic tendencies, and Ben as of Ultimate Alien wouldn't have anything in his arsenal that would defend him against the telepathy of Psykers, which makes the Thousand Suns uniquely dangerous if Ben doesn't have any time to prepare to fight with them. Similarly, if he were to encounter a particularly robust shard of Magnus, without any gear to supplement his objective lack of telepathy resistance, he'd be in a much more dire spot of trouble than with other Daemon Princes. Kamara. Unless Ben is aware of where he is, he genuinely might face one of the most horrific deaths imaginable here. But that's just if they manage to get the jump on him. Kamara is a near solar system sized malignant colony populated by the most depraved and capable warriors in the 40k galaxy, with technology that's on the upper end of what's currently available in the verse. The only other option that would be available to him would be to slink away into the vast jagged shadows of the Dark Eldar Fortress Megacity. Individual raiding parties of Dark Eldar wouldn't be a huge problem even for aliens like Diamond Head or Swampfire, but Ben would consistently have to be on his A-game. Their atom-shearing weapons would be able to penetrate most of his defenses. 
There's also the fact that without extensive reconnaissance, Ben will have zero clue on how to even escape the Kamara, as it's not even in the material galaxy. Ben would have to retreat into some occupied space and use Brainstorm or Grey Matter to gather knowledge on the area. And he'd have to do that carefully, as Kamara's defense systems are among the best in the 40k universe. Theoretically, Ben could use Upgrade to stow away on a raiding party ship, defeat the occupants when they land on a world that they plan to victimize, and move on to doing heroics in the galaxy. But if he doesn't figure out a way to get out of Kamara, though, he would have no option but to wage a losing guerrilla war on a battlefield the size of a solar system where every encounter that he doesn't pull out an alien with planet plus attack potency, he would run the risk of bringing all the Dark Eldar's forces on him. Cursory glances at the Kamara would also show that the Dark Eldar have untold amount of people in bondage, which would stop Ben from simply destroying the Dark Eldar in one fell swoop with his strongest aliens, as it would take the lies of innocence that the Dark Eldar have hostage. The Warp The Warp is a similar case with Chaos Worlds, except there's not a thin barrier of the material world protecting Ben from the horrors of the Chaos Gods, and various other Warp constructs which would force Ben to turtle up in his most powerful transformation, Alien X. That is if his mind's not completely scrambled by the onslaught of a constant shifting galactic gestalt field. Alien X's raw power trumps that of any individual Chaos God with its multi-universal durability and attack potency, but Ben having to constantly argue with Serena and Bellicus about every individual action makes the alien's use outside of pure defense pretty questionable. Ben could realistically be in a position where he's stuck in eternity arguing over why he should be able to turn his head left, meaning that he survives in a sense, but I don't know if I would necessarily call that living. Mars. The technological prowess and complete amoral nature of the Adeptus Mechanicus makes it so that if Ben is captured and the Ultimatrix capabilities are studied, it could spell doom for the rest of the galaxy. Their tenuous relationship with the rest of the Imperium is carefully balanced by the Imperial's monopoly of force in comparison to their monopoly of technical skill. If the Mechanicus replicates the Ultimatrix, that balance is completely disrupted and they would be unstoppable. Their advanced communications and radar systems would make detecting the unique energies emitted by the Ultimatrix relatively easy on Mars. And their direct line to the Holy Terra make it so that a staggering force of the Imperium's finest can fall onto Ben at any moment. Clemency in exchange for small windows to study some information from the Alter Matrix may be granted, but it would have to be at the discretion of the Mechanicus, who may simply take him by force. Next, we're going to cover the likely but still pretty bad scenarios. Hive Worlds Depending on the Hive World, this could be an ample opportunity for Ben to get a grasp on how dire the situation is, while also having some time to breathe and think of a strategy. Hive Worlds are densely packed and generally mechanical hellscapes that are heavily overpopulated and rife with almost every danger in the verse. These ranging from Dark Elder Raids, Chaos Cultists, the oppressive regime of the Imperium, Tyranid Gene Stealer Cults, not to mention the dangers unique to the Hive Worlds like Hive Gangs. This dangerous and ever-shifting urban environment would certainly be a challenge for Ben, but not one he wouldn't be likely to overcome. Ben would have to learn High Gothic and likely would have to occupy himself with a backbreaking job to blend in, but he could use Brainstorm or Grey Matter to great effect to gain reconnaissance on the goings-on in the galaxy in this scenario at least. Upgrade's use here also shines. His ability to control technology would make him invaluable to Ben's crusade under the noses of the Imperium, but the diversity of threats also works in Ben's favor. He'd be able to gain experience on most of what he would be facing in the 40k verse before he set off for himself. The corrupt nature of the bureaucracies in charge of the Hive World would also halt the march of the Imperial Guard or Space Marines, and this would quell any insurrection that Ben may stir up, allowing him to build a fighting force not unlike the plumbers in the sickly underbelly of Imperial might. The same would largely apply to Forge Worlds, with the notable addition that Ben would have to use Snaro or Upgrade to extensively survive in the harsh pollution of the planet. Upgrade's technopathy also shines even more here. He would literally be surrounded by nothing but advanced manufacturing technology that he'd be able to commandeer from the Imperium. Tyranid and Orc Worlds at first, it would seem that Tyranids would be a terrible matchup. They would definitely attempt to gather genetic material from Ben's various forms to bolster their forces. If they succeeded in this, it would be absolutely catastrophic. One of the primary problems that halts Ben from surviving in the Dark Eldar scenario is that Ben can't fully release his might against the Kamara without being bombarded with planet plus level weapons, or risk destroying millions of innocent people. This simply isn't the case with a world that the Tyranids have fully conquered, as their automatons aren't sentient and thinking beings and they take no prisoners. Ben would be free to fully unleash the frightening power of Ultimate Waybig or Ultimate Echo Echo in this situation. Katachin. For other characters, a death world filled with various plant-based super predators would prove a stiff test. But Ben has two aliens that can directly mold the environment to their will or just assimilate into it, with Swampfire and Wildvine respectively. Ben is also under very little danger of just being instantly murdered by the gene-altering Spiker, as Ben's DNA sample in the Ultimatrix would be used and defaulted to. If he were to potentially face something that's more lethal in his forms that can't regenerate, the Ultimatrix would automatically default to a more suitable alien, as was the case when he first battled Vilgax as a teenager. And lastly, we'll cover the best case scenarios. Paradise Worlds As advertised, Paradise Worlds would pose the least amount of problems for Ben as they're pretty much a freebie. Limited access to Imperial Records, lush environments to slowly learn and acclimate to the verse, and he can just kick back. Ultramar 
The realm of Ultramar, while fascistic and far from ideal from the perspective of someone who's fond of concepts like human dignity and rights, it's still among the most heavily fortified regions in the Warhammer 40k galaxy, and home to one of the more palatable Space Marine chapters in the Ultramarines. Ben's compliance with their rigid structure would likely be next to non-existent, but were he to speak directly to Kalgar, or better yet, the newly resurrected Gilliman, then things can take a very climactic turn. The oppressive and frankly silly regime of the Imperium would be a large topic of discussion between Ben and Gilliman, and eventually Gilliman would blurb out that the issues only took hold during Horus Heresy. After some excursions with an Ultramarine chapter, Ben would quickly get wise to how far gone the universe is and would be forced to make a decision. Continue fighting this battle in a dying galaxy accosted from all angles, or use his most powerful transformations to level the playing field against not only chaos but the galaxy at large. Ben's amicable nature and experience would have him understand the viewpoints of the craft world Eldar and Tau, and he'd likely argue for peace with both factions in either case. If Ben were to continue the fight in the 41st millennium, he would at some point be forced to use Alien X. While none of the Chaos Gods individually can defeat him, Alien X's limited functionality would in turn limit him to large climactic changes. Ben could travel to when Chaos first scattered the Primarchs across the cosmos with clockwork, and warn the Emperor of Mankind of the horrific future ahead of him. Ben could also bring Gilliman to emphasize how dire the situation is, and implore cooperation with other powers, such as the craft world Eldar and Tau. Under the impression the Emperor listens, Ben would turn the grim darkness of the far future into a bright one, carefully reaching each Primarch at the right time so that the ones who wouldn't turn to Chaos would develop as normal, and the ones who did wouldn't be swayed. A further emphasis on cooperation with aliens in the face of utter annihilation would be spurred on by Ben. This scenario, while unlikely, is entirely possible, and would see a unified galaxy against all the forces that would threaten it, such as Chaos, the Orcs, and the Tyranids. We hope you guys liked our first Patreon community post, and if you want to be a part of the decision on the topic of next month's video, then follow the link to our Patreon and join the $3 GigaChad tier. But other than that, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, hit the bell icon to stay notified on when we post next, and don't forget to follow our TikTok where we make daily posts. Until next time, guys.